Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope your night or day is going good. Again, I want to thank the people that sent me Lordship Salvation videos. Been going through them. Here's one of them. Just going to get right into the video. We're going to break it down as we go and line it up with the Word of God, taking every thought captive and obedient to the Word of Christ, and see if this makes sense according to the Gospel and Scripture. There is a holiness without which we will not see the Lord. I really believe that. There is a practical, daily, lived-out righteousness without which nobody gets into heaven. Now that was an excerpt from one of John Piper's sermons. He's a Lordship Salvationist, and in his Lordship Salvation doctrine, he just denied the gospel. He said that there's a personal holiness that must be lived out practically day by day, by which if no one has, they will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So basically he's telling you in order for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you have to have a righteousness of your own. And Paul said, may I be found in him having a righteousness, not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness of God on the basis of faith. So that's the gospel is that we receive the righteousness of God on the basis of faith, even the sinner and the ungodly person to the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is accredited to righteousness. So the ungodly person believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is justified and he's made righteous. And that's the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith, not by works. And that's what he just did is denied the gospel and saying you have to have a righteousness of your own. I'll play it back for you so you can hear it again. I really believe that. There is a practical daily lived out righteousness without which nobody gets into heaven. So he's saying nobody gets into heaven, which he means no one is saved unless they have their own personal righteousness to bring to Jesus and to bring to God so that they can be saved. Yet the scripture says there's none righteous, no, not even one. In our own standing, there's no one good but God alone. That the only way we're made righteous is in Jesus Christ. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So we don't get righteousness through the law or through our good behavior or through our performance. We get it through believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what he just did was deny the gospel. And he said this too at the beginning. Let me play it for you. There is a holiness without which we will not see the Lord. So there's a holiness by which if we don't have it, we won't see the Lord. That was written to Hebrews who are constantly striving for personal holiness under the law. They were doing the ceremonies, the temporal sacrifices, trying to keep the law. And this was written to them that without holiness, no one will see God. But he wasn't talking about personal holiness. He was talking about the holiness that came through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, the same letter, it says, By his will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. So through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been made holy once and for all, off into eternity. That's a eternal declaration that we have been made holy through the sacrifice of Jesus, not through what we do. Notice too that that verse wasn't in Corinthians, that without holiness, no one will see God. They were committing all kinds of sexual immoralities and all kinds of sins that exceeded even the Gentiles. Now, that would seem like a more appropriate verse directed to them if we were saved by our works and it was about our own personal holiness. But it's actually was written to the Hebrews who were constantly seeking personal holiness. And the Bible tells us that we're made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. I really believe that. There is a practical daily lived out righteousness without which nobody gets into heaven. So he clearly denied the gospel in saying what he just said, because we don't get into heaven by our righteousness. We get into heaven by Christ's righteousness, 
That's why Paul said, may I be found in him having a righteousness, not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness of God on the basis of faith. So Paul said, may I be found in him having a righteousness, not of my own. That's why Jesus told us, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not your own. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And he said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So if you have hungered and thirsted after righteousness as a sinner, and you came to Jesus and asked for forgiveness, not only did he forgive you of your sins, but he made you righteous. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst, which means you have been filled with his righteousness. And it's not of your own, it's his righteousness. And it's eternal and it's everlasting. And you don't have to establish your own. The Bible says, they being ignorant of God's righteousness or seeking to establish their own, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. He just set up a situation where you have to establish your own righteousness, and that's how you are saved. That's how you enter into the kingdom of God. Completely false, and his lordship salvation doctrine forced him to, to teach that heretical nonsense. Believe that. There is a practical, daily, lived-out righteousness without which nobody gets into heaven. Which means that Jesus will say to some professing Christians on the judgment day, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. See, that was the verse I just covered on the last video, which is interesting. And notice how he quickly flashed things about the law. Let me go back to it so you can see. Um, watch the, the things about the law being flashed before your eyes. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. See, things about the law were just flashed before your eyes as though if you don't keep the law and establish your own righteousness, a practical righteousness that you live out every day under the law, then you won't be saved. Yet, as I tell uh, my subscribers all the time, as God has told us, through him, everyone who believes has been freed from all things through which they could not be freed from through the law of Moses. We've been freed from the law. You have died to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says um, in Romans. Likewise, brothers, you have died to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you might be joined to another, that is him who has been raised from the dead, in order that you might bear fruit to God. So we have died to the law. We have been freed from the law. The law has come to its end, according to Scripture. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So the law has come to its end. If you have your faith in Christ, you have been made righteous, and you are not under law, the Bible says. You are not under law, but under grace. So we're not under the law, and yet he just made it as though if you don't live out a practical righteousness of your own under the law, you won't be saved and you won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. It will actually be those who are trying to justify themselves under the works of the law that he will say, depart from me, you who practice iniquity, you evildoers, you sinners, you who are practice lawlessness, you ungodly, depart from me, because only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. And the law doesn't show a person is righteous, it just shows that they're guilty. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, but only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. So we're not justified through the law, works of the law in the sight of God. We're justified by faith. As Romans tells us, we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So we have a justified non-guilty verdict by faith apart from performance. And salvation is a one-time event. He made it like it's an ongoing, lifelong event by which you save yourself through your own righteousness. It also means that there are many church-going people who believe that they are saved because they once prayed to receive Jesus, not realizing that the proof of the genuineness of that prayer is perseverance in faith and holiness. So you can see that he doesn't believe that salvation is a one-time event upon believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that when you come to him and you ask him for the forgiveness of sins, 
and ask him for forgiveness that he saves you and he saves you eternally he doesn't believe that he says you have to persevere in your own holiness which means you the evidences of for true salvation is your works on the backside of salvation that exactly what he's laying out is that you can't just call out on the name of the lord and expect to be saved the, the moment you believe you can't just expect to be saved even though jesus says truly truly i say to you whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life not might have not could have not possibly have but has everlasting life they shall not come into the judgment they have passed from death to life so jesus tells us that salvation is a one-time event upon calling upon him whoever calls on the name of the lord will be saved the moment they do that they are saved and they are made righteous and it's not on the basis of their works or their performance that you have to establish on the backside of salvation to prove that you're saved the scripture says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of the things not seen. So our faith is the very substance of itself. It contains everything we need in salvation because it's placed in Jesus Christ. To look for evidence of things seen in your life, you're looking for your life and your works to see if you're actually saved in and of yourself through your own righteousness. That would be look, looking to evidences of things seen, and that's what John Piper is laying out is that you look to the evidence of your life after you have believed to see if you're actually saved, not that you have believed. It also means that there are many church going people who believe that they are saved because they once prayed to receive Jesus, not realizing that the proof of the genuineness of that prayer is perseverance in faith and holiness. He who endures to the end will be saved. Not those. Oh gosh. Those who endure to the end will be saved. How many heretics quote that Matthew chapter 24 verse, which is talking about the end times, and then never rightly divide it with the fact that what it's talking about is our faith and belief in Jesus Christ. That he that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. That is the work of God that we believe on the one that he sent, as Jesus said, when he was asked by his disciples, what must we do to do the works of God? And Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. And Paul tells us, I am confident that he that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God who is doing that work in us to believe in the one that he sent, is going to perfect it all the way until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, he that began a good work in you will complete it. And it's not us doing it. It's all, always these people taking the boastings upon themselves on why they'll be saved. They believe they'll be enduring to the end on their own power. So I guess I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I hope uh, this was clear. And I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter. So God bless you and peace to you. Take care. I hope your night or day is going good.